Why all the astronauts must speak Russian? Have you ever heard about Rumlish? Or Russinglish? Or Ruglish? Or Ruslish? Or whatever? These strings usually refer to English heavily influenced by the Russian language, usually common among Russian speakers with English as a second language. In 2000, the term Runglish was popularized as a name for one of the languages aboard the International Space Station. Cosmonaut Sergei Krikalyov said, We say jokingly that we communicate in Runglish, a mixture of Russian and English languages, so that when we are short of words, in one language we can use the other, because all the crew members speak both languages well. NASA has since begun listing Runglish as one of the onboard languages. During the fiercely competitive space race in Cold War, NASA was at the time an understandably insular organization. Its crews were all American, and therefore communication was solely in English. However, had Armstrong been an astronaut today, he would have almost certainly needed to be proficient in Russian. Without access to translation services, in space, astronauts are required to be competent in speaking and understanding the language. Since the launch of the ISS, International Space Station in 1998, knowledge of Russian has been essential for every astronaut cosmonaut or space tourist who has visited what is currently our planet's only habitable artificial satellite. For the people who are not space fans, ISS the International Space Station is probably an unfamiliar terminology. Let's first take a look of what it is. The ISS, essentially a low-Earth orbit research laboratory, is a joint venture between the five participating space agencies of the US, Russia, Japan, Europe, and Canada. It is the only laboratory which is not locates in any continent but about 408 kilometers high above and circles the Earth with a speed of 25,000 kilometers per hour. The ISS circles the Earth in roughly 93 minutes, completing 15.5 orbits per day, which means the astronauts working on the station experience 16 sunrises and sunsets each day. It can be viewed from the Earth. There is a website provided by NASA named Spot the Station. No matter where you are on the Earth, you just need to input your location. It will list the opportunities that you can see the station pass through the sky. I suggest everybody try it at least once. Before this project run of money. For the last 20 years, US, Russian, Japan, Canada and the European Space Agency have operated this laboratory together. It is composed of two segments the USOS United States Operating Segment, and the RS Ration Segment. There is a six-person crew, with three crew members from each segment. NASA shares its three slots, with Europe, Japan and Canada. The first ISS component was launched in 1998, and the first long-term residents arrived on 2 November 2000 after being launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on 31 October 2000. As of November 2020, 240 to astronauts, cosmonauts, and space tourists from 19 different nations have visited the space station, many of them multiple times. This includes 152 Americans, 49 Russians, 9 Japanese, 8 Canadians, and 5 Italians. What a cool thing. It is just a pity that the ticket to get there is a little expensive. However, since the space shuttle program was brought to an end in 2011, NASA no longer had a spacecraft system capable of sending humans to space. As a result, between the year 2011 to 2020, it was forced to fly its astronauts to the International Space Station aboard the Russian Soyuz space vehicle, at a cost of up to US $80 million per astronaut. All crews have transferred using Russian Soyuz vehicles. But even when the NASA Space Shuttle was in operation before 2011, it was not kept attached to the ISS. So if something went wrong, all crew members would have to come home in a Soyuz. The official working language aboard the station is English. Excellent. Procedures on the station are provided in both English and Russian. However, between 2011 and 2020, when the Soyuz spacecrafts are the only way to get to the ISS, every astronauts must learn Russian. Because on the Soyuz spacecrafts, all the controls are not bilingual but only Russian. All astronauts who go to the ISS have to receive extensive training at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center outside of Moscow. They have to be able to operate the Soyuz and communicate with the Russian specialists on the ground. Of course, the turning point is Crew Dragon Demo 2 from SpaceX, named Endeavour after the eponymous Space Shuttle Vehicle, which launched on 30 May 2020 and carried NASA astronauts Douglas Hurley and Robert Behnken to the International Space Station. 
It is the first crewed orbital spaceflight launched from the United States since the final space shuttle mission. The spacecraft docked with the ISS for 62 days, then autonomously undocked from the station on the 1st of August 2020, and returned the astronauts to Earth on the 2nd of August. And even better, the Endeavour will be refurbished and reused for the SpaceX crew to mission, expected to launch on the 20th of April 2021. As the first ever operated by a private commercial provider, the cost that NASA need to pay to SpaceX is expected to be 50% less than Soyuz once in regular operation. And above all of these, the most important, finally the American or other nations astronauts and space tourists do not need to speak Russian. Oh yeah, just a joke. Compare with all the efforts, trainings, and risks a space traveler need to take. Learning Russian is just a small part of it. In the meantime, every Russian astronauts or space traveler from any nations also need to speak English, and multi-language skills may help keep them alive. If you saw the movie Gravity, you may have noticed that Sandra Bullock had to be able to rid Russian manuals to operate the Russian Soyuz spacecraft, and she ran into trouble when she got aboard the Chinese space station and all the switches and manuals were in Chinese. Actually the two American astronauts from the SpaceX crew Dragon Demo 2 Douglas Hurley and Robert Benkin both can speak Russian. Douglas Hurley even served as the NASA Director of Operations at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in the Russian Star City. By the way, you may already noticed, China was not the member of ISS, but recent years China is quite active in the space exploring missions and they already got few astronauts into the space. They have their own spacecraft and astronauts, and so far, only Chinese nationals had traveled to space on Chinese spacecraft. And the Chinese astronauts have traveled to space only with Chinese spacecrafts. And they do not need to dock with the ISS, which means they do not need to deal with any Soyuz aircraft. So, looks like if you are from China, you do not need to speak Russian to go to the space, even to the Mars in future. So the question is, whether the Chinese astronauts speak Russian. Well, actually the Chinese astronauts still can speak Russian. It's because many of them or maybe even all of them, were partially trained in Russia with Russian coaches, such as the weightless environment training. And anybody, no matter what the country he or she is from, if it is necessary for him or her to work with Russian space agency, then they must be able to read, hear, speak and comprehend in Russian. This was a non-negotiable point for all involved. Do we need an official international space language? This could be a question that needs addressing in the next few years since the future of the ISS is not guaranteed. The station is funded only until 2025 and may be deorbited in 2030. Also, several countries, including China, are competing to be the first to send a crewed mission to Mars. A huge project that would likely require international collaboration to succeed. If Chinese does eventually, become the language of space, then future astronauts might well look back enviously on their forebears who had the easy task of learning Russian. Well, here is what we get today, and I will see you for next time. Thank you for watching.